uh, fill in or additional uh, PRP. The rationale being is to update the possible remaining ischemic retina that was continuing to elaborate by proliferative factors. By additional PRP, we mean that it is done in a quadrant which was not lasered before. For example, uh, inferior quadrant laser when uh, vitreous hemorrhage resolves or adding additional uh, temporal quadrant laser which wasn't lasered before. So when to fill in ETDRS gave certain guidelines for follow-up treatment, that is change in new vessels since the last visit or the last photocoagulation, appearance of new vessels, frequency and extent of vitreous hemorrhage, status of vitreous detachment by which it meant uh, if the patient has extensive vitreous detachment, it is less likely that the patient would need uh, additional uh, fill in PRP because it, uh, the new vessels grows only at the site of vitreoretinal lesions. And the extent of photocoagulation scars, so if the scars are widely placed, you can always fill in in the follow-up treatment. So ways to identify the skip areas could be clinically, fundus photo, fundus fluorescent angiographic guided or fundus autofluorescence. This first picture shows autofluorescence guided where we see clear skip areas in the superotemporal and temporal quadrant. And this is the FFA guided, uh, this is FFA of a VITIC patient which shows peripheral uh, CNP and uh, NVEs. So where to fill in? Uh, so for cases uh, having neovascularization of iris or neovascularization uh, neovascular glaucoma we like to fill in till as anterior as possible till the aura uveitis also we fill in more anteriorly then uh, we fill in adjacent to the fresh nves and recurrent vitreous hemorrhage we like to fill in whatever posterior area which is available so uh, in fill in first ex uh, assess the extent of laser scars and decide if the patient would be needing one or two sittings of fill in laser educate and counsel the patient about the need to fill in uh, lasers because they always have the thing that uh, only three sessions were told to them and they won't require any other additional laser so fill in laser can always be painful so be uh, mindful of that and give patient uh, give patient more breaks and in cases of fill-in, uh, use low-intensity burns because, because of the previous uh, PRP scars, the middle, the retina, which is in between those scars, becomes necrotic and thin. So more intensity burns can actually cause Brooks membrane uh, rupture. Then uh, avoid directly hitting on the old laser scars. So this is one patient. Uh, PRP was done three settings. Uh, we reviewed this patient after three months, and there was a inferior subhyloid hemorrhage. So we and we saw a few skip areas superiorly and temporally and within scar marks. So we uh, uh, added a few additional uh, like additional uh, laser marks. This is another patient post three sessions PRP. On follow up, we saw inferotemporal NVE, and then uh, there were skip areas in the superior and temporal quadrant. So the, those were filled in. This area was filled in. This is a ITBRVO patient which had uh, chronic uh, CME. There was, a, if we look very closely, there was one streak of uh, subhyloid hemorrhage here associated with NVE. So we filled in exactly in that area. This was the patient where the skip area is clearly visible in the superior and temporal quadrant. So th this area was filled in. So at uh, don'ts, don't hit the areas of previous scars, avoid high intensity burns and stay away from disc and fovea. And in fill in PRP, less is always more. So always just laser whatever is required and do not additional uh, put additional laser marks. In this case, the retinopathy was stable, other eye was stable. Uh, we couldn't see any uh, signs of uh, active retinopathy. So why did we add uh, laser? Why did we fill in? Ask the consultant who did as advised. That will be the obvious logical answer. Did I did I send it? <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, uh, genuinely asking. You genuinely asking. Because ask you are, asked me. That's why. <laughs> no, general. I'm... No, in in a general. We see there is a uh, like a large skip area, which is quite evident. No, you don't have to do it just for creativity. No, I'll see. There's sometimes you know. There are situations where you feel something is incomplete. Let me complete it for whatever it's worth. For all you know, when the initial laser was done, patient had NPDR, didn't even have PDR. Okay. But now you have a PRP patient you're going to call every year. By doing cleaning up that uh, skip area with laser, that may have been the idea of the person who suggested it. So similarly, you have a patient with 360 degree lattices, which you would never have treated, but someone does a half-hearted thing. And then you see one edge is 
not treated. So you say, yeah, let me complete that. So these are probably relative indications which you look at if this is a one-night patient and you see this, you also wonder, maybe this was just that, you know, we are worried about treating the macula. So someone put that uh, paraj there and forgot about it or couldn't see because of cortical spokes. I mean, there could be very different reasons, but I would say this is an incomplete PRP, so why not? complete it if I was going to justify it. But ma'am, there is no harm leaving it also? Ma'am, see, if this is 66N6I, six, six, there's no evidence of neovascularization anywhere and you're wondering, you know, was there an indication for PRP in the first place? Supposing you have some documentation which shows that it was only NPDR or something because indications can vary. There is no harm leaving it as long as you are justified that there is nothing else. Sometimes this happens when you have not handled the patient in the beginning and then you are in that situation, you don't know what to do. So this is relatively harmless to complete the PRP. At least you won't wonder why that gap is there next time. Uh, Ritika, was this my patient? Yes, sir. Yeah, so this patient was one-eyed, other eye was lost due to neovascular glaucoma. And uh, he also had persistent CME. He had repeated multiple injections elsewhere, but he was needing more anti wedgef also. So okay. that's why I had advised. Yeah, yeah. but where is the new uh, ischemic area? How did you assess that? I uh, showed the autofluorescence of that uh, same patient. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. That area is not, uh, no, no. You have seen the autofluorescence. Auto First thing you showed. Yeah. But if, honestly speaking, if there is no new vessel disease, nothing is there, you could have left it also. Since he's coming to you regularly. If he's not coming to you regularly and you still... No, so this patient was treated earlier at Bangladesh and he may not follow up with me. So uh, he had um, persistent CME also. Other eye was lost due to neovascular glaucoma. That's why I went ahead and did the lesion. Yeah, yeah, but what did you treat uh, the CME with? CME, I give an anti sir. Oh, you give an anti he's, he's going to get further injections at Bangladesh. She may not come for follow-up, so that's why I treated. But she has a cataract also? Uh, no, sir. He is pseudophagic and he has some PCOAs. PCOA. Something is there because there's a reflection in the center. Yes, sir. More concern was the he's one eye. The other eye was lost due to neovascular glaucoma. So, Ritika, you got your answer. Yeah, so usually there is something behind. The story is there. And a perfectly justified one. 